Welcome to the Olympus server. Earth Merlibus. And today I haven't done much since our last episode. I have moved a few things up here. Not really moved, but um, added a few items in. I completed the dirt bowl here. Ooh, uh. So now everything is covered in. Um, what did I do? I think I brought up some slabs. I made some bricks. I think I'm going to change the layout. Because so I do kind of like the way the wood is laid out. How we have... I also brought up some... Or I, quiet. I planted some jungle and chopped down a few. And Jarscraft is here. Oops. <laughs> but yeah, I do like how the wood is kind of laid out. How it's kind of logs. Planks, slabs, stairs. I think that looks a little better than trying to have them kind of all over the place. So I might try to do the same thing over here with like the brick style ones. So maybe like smooth or stone bricks, nether rack, or nether brick, and regular brick. Ha 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 ha. And. And do this a similar style. So put the blocks near each other, the stairs near each other, and so maybe you'll have like slabs, stairs, and then blocks or something like that. And maybe if there's another fourth one, we could do that. Um, they don't have logs, obviously, so we'd only need a th like a three section to do it. It's not what I want to put in there. Okay, but that's about it. So I've moved some stuff up here. I had a couple chests over here that were full of all the logs. And had a bunch of stone in it, so I moved that over here. I've started kind of laying out some items that maybe I want to throw in here. These are all just crafted items, so I don't, they wouldn't necessarily be sorted, mind you. But iron bars, fence posts. I'm not sure if I should move the netherrack post over there as well, maybe. But that's enough of that. What I want to work on today is I want to have that item elevator that I talked about. That's one other thing I did. Um, let's head down. <laughs> I think that was from the co-op. I moved the pyramid down as far as I could. So it is now, if you can see, um, maybe we'll look from here. There we go. So it is two above the switch's spawning platform. So that's kind of as low as I could get it. And it does indeed go all the way up to... Yeah, there's some more stuff I have to fill in. Sorry, getting distracted. Goodbye! Um, it does indeed go all the way to Sky Limit, the beacons now. So that's cool. I did not know that. It doesn't go all the way down, it's still limited to 50 below it, and then it's 50, 50 blocks counting from here out to the sides, so 50 out to the sides, etc. But as far as it seems like it'll go up wherever the beam goes up, so all the way to sky limit kind of thing. So that is cool, so that means I don't really need to worry about how high up we go in the tower and not have the, the beacon actually reach. Um, yeah, so this stuff I do actually want to fill in with dirt, but can I get through here? Uh, almost. There we go. Let's get some redstone stuff. We're going to do a bit of redstone today. Uh, we could harvest that, maybe? Meh. Collecting a bunch of wheat, as I think it's going to be more useful in 1.6. They did show those wheat bales at one point. I don't know if they will, those were official or not. But um, they may be something useful. I don't know if they're going to be at the food for the horses that they say they're adding or what. But anyway, I am collecting a bunch of wheat. Basically, whenever that thing is full, I tend to harvest it. Also collecting a bunch of beef. I think these are all full of beef, so I'm going to stockpile that. People have been buying my Merrill's meat at the shop, so... I will try to keep that stocked up. That could be a source of iron. And Jars Crafted and D Gamer have been working on a iron golem farm 
at spawn the loaded chunk area. The chunk that is always loaded, so that might be interesting. Be a continual flow of iron for the server, I think he said, but we shall see. We're going to try to get our own up and running here. Uh, what do I need? Comparators, we've got redstone, we've got blocks. I think that's about it. Let's head back up to the tower to work on this. So, as I mentioned, we're going to have an item elevator. Uh, let's go back inside here. Um, how to get inside. <laughs> hmm. I don't think I can pearl through most of this. Uh, is there any way underneath? There we go. Alright, so, from the plan. Okay, not from the plan. That's two sentences combined into one. The plan. So all the mob dro drops that are going down there, instead of having them sorted down there, we're just going to have them sent up an item elevator. And said item elevator will probably be in one of the cores, which I think I've mentioned. So at some point I'm probably going to get rid of this water and actually dig a tunnel down. It probably doesn't have to actually be that big. It'll probably be like a 5x5 five five, all the way down to where those guys are, where that meets. And then that would go up all the way to the top. However, because this thing kind of constantly rains down items, so we're going to have to do one... Th uh, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to do one thing. Because these items are introduced into hoppers already, we're going to have to spit those items out. So from the hoppers, we will have them enter into a dropper. Is the plan somewhere. So could be actually right around here where we just turn these pipes or underneath or whatever doesn't really matter but they will enter introduce into a, a dropper and then from this dropper they're going to be spat out into the different type of item elevator the one that moves items through blocks using a piston but I don't want that item elevator to be running all the time so I'm thinking we could kind of design some kind of uh, buffer so that the thing won't start like the dropper won't automatically just spit out items it'll wait until it's either like full or three quarters full or something like that and then it will spit out all the items it has inside of it until it is empty and then that will be its cycle and then it'll wait until it's filled up again so we're going to figure out how we can wire that up. And I'm guessing we're going to use comparators. I actually also want... I want a hopper. Or hopper? Hopper or dropper? What do I want? Oh, we can make one. Uh, is there a crafting table? There is. So let's make... Let's make two hoppers. Something that we will always need here, probably. Oh, I already had chests. Oops. Uh, one and two. Okay. So let's get away from the portal sound. <laughs> let's set up over here again. Okay, so there will be our dropper. And it won't spit out items until it is full. At least that's the goal. And I think we can accomplish that simply with... Uh, let's just move it up one. Oops. Just so we have a little bit more room to work with. And it will be fed from a hopper line, pipeline, similar to that. So we would have... And we'll worry about getting it more compact later. Let's just figure out kind of the... how it will work. I'm thinking because a comparator will output a signal strength based on how many items are in it. So if we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, sure. We can use that as kind of our throttle. So like we can get, we could take two signals off of this thing. Now let's move that one over here. So anytime 
it starts filling up with items, and maybe we can get a bunch of items. Do I have enough dirt? I don't know if I have enough dirt up here. Uh, close. Okay, get some grass. I could throw some enderpearls in there, maybe. So as items are introduced into this thing, let's throw... Oops. Five stacks-ish of dirt. The signal strength will increase as it is being filled up. So eventually it will get to two, and this will turn off. And then once it gets all the way full, this one will turn off. And this will be the one that triggers the cycle. So that torch is turned off. So if we simply use a, I'm thinking, a RS NOR latch of some kind, I'll go with this guy for now. Um, which way is the best way to do it? Oops. This might be too close. Alright, so if we have that guy, so when this guy which it won't, because I haven't put enough stuff in it. Uh, <laughs> I'll just keep feeding it until we see what happens and we'll work with it. Okay, so if I take that one, then um, I always forget which way... Let's make some buttons here. Figure out which way we have to flick this. So if that is off... Yeah, well, this will change its states, I think. And that would change it back. So we have to introduce into that block, or this block, to be honest. And what we could do, in fact, is not even worry about a torch there. We could just do that and get a repeater going. So once it gets full, it will flip the state to that state. And it'll keep running until it gets a signal from that one. So if we're stealing power from this guy, he's currently off at the moment. But when he turns on from it being depleted, it will flick that state. So that's kind of our cycle. And I don't know if I can change this. We might be able to change it using two comparators and then have it compare our larger signal strength so I don't actually have to have this length of wire being 13 long. I heard ya. I have no weapon. Waha! You shall burn! Nope, oh, maybe not. All right, so let's see here. I still don't think we have enough items in it. We don't. Uh, okay, let's put a pick or <laughs> an axe, a pick and a bow because they'll take up a full amount. Okay, so that did it. So that set it off when it was basically um, eight, eight ninths full, but that might not actually be the case if I got rid of that. So no, there we go. So it won't be completely full when that thing sets off. And when that goes off, I also want, this could be very ugly, <laughs> but this is just to get it, um, functional, I guess. Wow, I really should have got <laughs> more blocks. Um, I also want to lock the... Whew. <laughs> this is so bad. I want to lock the hopper so that more items can't be introduced while this thing is, is going. So now that's going to go off, though, when that is depowered. So actually, I don't think I want to do that. I want to put a repeater here because that will pull power as long as this redstone is active. This is the worst redstone. Oh, no, can't do that. Well, this isn't going to work. 
<laughs> okay, let's move that over here. No, that won't work either. Lost. Okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I hope that's not too long. I don't think so. All right, so we'll take a repeater out of here and power it across. Let's get that back. And we basically want to power this block here. So let's just do it incredibly ugly. Missy redstone again. All right, so that will power this hopper, which will prevent any more items from being introduced into this thing. So once it has reached this state, we also now want to toggle it. So this is probably going to be in the way as well. Or maybe not. So we could set up a simple pulsar. Probably here. And have that, oops. Have that go to power that. And that would be powered by this, this same line, I guess. This, so we could actually power that from this as well. Oh, charge is gone. Bye, jars. So this should run theoretically now until it gets empty. And then this other signal should turn on. We could see it getting lower. And once it gets down to here, this will turn on, which will flip the state of this RS Norlatch. <laughs> this is going to like, take a while, but this is basically the idea. I'll pick up my tools. So yeah, signal strength is decreasing. And it should go until it has maybe like 11 items in it or whatever it is. Find out, I guess. And then hopefully it will change states. There we go. It pulsed. And now it will stay like that until the next cycle. So that works wiring wise. Obviously, it's incredibly ugly. So I'll probably try to compact it. And this is okay. Like, this actually turned off and then turned back on again because this thing started throwing items back in, I think. But it doesn't really matter if this thing gets pulsed on more than once, because we are using an RS Norlatch. So sending multiple pulses here at this stage doesn't do anything. It won't do anything until this one is actually activated again. So until this guy gets power from it being activated, let's just say it gets power, then it will start firing again until this gets powered and turns it off. That makes sense. So that kind of automatically shuts it off when there's so many items in it. So that way it'll keep some items in and with our witch farm it won't be a problem. Like we won't have... I don't think it should be a problem in terms of it not being able to spit out a certain type of item. We'll have to see. We could always set up multiple ones of these, multiple droppers, so it spits out more items, kind of creates a backlog. And I'm hopefully going to have it set up into uh, in such a way, like the water flow, that hopefully the items will stack up with each other as they're falling down, so that we're not having like single items heading up the item elevator. And the item elevator is going to be at the center of this. So the center beam will be the item elevator. So we'll actually be able to see the items heading up that glass. Uh. There we go. So yeah, in the middle there, we'll be able to see items kind of floating up as they're being processed. And I believe that's how I want all items to be introduced as well. So we're going to have chests around the area as well that will be kind of return. So if you don't feel like going and throwing items back in a chest, you can just dump them into 
some other chest. I don't know where we'll have them. Maybe on the ground here. We'll have a bunch of them all over the place that will essentially do the same thing. It will throw the items down, back down to the item elevator to be sent back up this way, and then be sorted. It's not going to be the most efficient, but I think it might be the coolest kind of visual-wise. That way you can always, you'll see items before they're being sent to their designated chests. They'll come floating up the elevator, and then somewhere at the top it's going to branch out and get introduced into the sorting system. So that's kind of the, the master plan. It's going to be a ongoing thing. Obviously I won't be able to complete it in a couple episodes or anything like that. But I think what I might do right now is I'm going to try to do compact this thing. I'll probably do it off screen here and then bring you guys back and show you what I've got. And yeah, so I will see you shortly. Definitely need more blocks though. Aha! Alright, just getting started here. I'll bring you in for when I got hopefully little things figured out. Which I don't know if I actually do. So I got two comparators here. One set up for that two signal strength here off to the right and then off to the left. I'm trying to figure out what we want this set at. So I'm going to use big items here to fill that up. Uh, so it still hasn't gone off. Now it's gone off. So that is actually waiting for it to be completely full. So I may want that to be less than that, so we can move that back another one. And then, still not going off, but it should go off soon. There we go. So again, it's not completely full. Don't know if I want it that. I think I want it less than that still. So I might make it um, signal strength of what would that be? 15, 14, 13? So 13 out of 15. So now like I don't want it to have to fill up completely just because we have different drops. So I might have to play around with the level we want that to go off. So there we go. I think I had it set up over here as a signal strength of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And that's what I got over here now, right? 15, 14, 13. So that will compare, and if it's equal or greater, it will send out a signal strength. So that will actually, that should work. And then from there, we're also going to want... No, because I don't need these blocks. Oh, I put all my tools in there. Brilliant. Let's take that back. Take those items out. So we know that works. So now i got to figure out maybe a good place. Like, And we could kind of change this up a bit to make it slightly more compact. Um, we could just have that going off to the side, really, or whatever. So it's a little, a little more compact. It all depends where I end up putting... Uh, putting something <laughs> the RS door latch and same with this one. Oh, I left my Skype on my apologies Same with this one. Um, this is where we're going to output The pulsar to get that going so we could actually Probably do something like that and have the signal go underneath and then hit up a pulsar somewhere else. So if the pulsar would be probably, I don't want it to connect there. And we're gonna have hoppers here, which I did bring. So this would be the hopper lines. We also wanna make sure that those don't get powered when we don't want them to be powered. And let's see here. So now we want our comparator. Got to make sure this... Oh, yeah, it doesn't block wiring. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's okay. We can always power it. Hmm. Well, we could move these guys somewhere else, too. I mean, we could have them like that. Oops. And then I could block that off. 
And then we could have our pulsar going here. I want to see if this will work. I know we looked at it before when we were doing the enderpearl thing, how that will depend on, like, this actually has to go from zero to something. It can't go from a single strength of, like, 12 to 1 or something like that, or it just doesn't work because dispensers and stuff don't get updated anymore from changes in redstone value. It actually has to go... Um, yeah. So, because that is, I don't think, actually dropping to zero strength. It's not going to... So this is 15, 15, 14. So that compares that, and that puts a single strength of 1. So that doesn't work. However, I wonder if... We get rid of that block, and we do that. Now it's going from 15, 14, 13, single strength of 2. Now it's still going to make it to there without actually dropping. So we want to move this back one to make sure that will actually pulse properly. And, yes, yeah, so let's move that back. Put that torch... Comparator. Now it should go off because that's going from a signal strength of 14 to 0. So 14, 0, 14, 0. So that will cause that to pulse. So that works. Now stop it. That works. So that gets energized from this guy which would go into our RS NOR latch, which I would have to figure out where to go, or I could use a different RS NOR latch. We could actually probably use a basic one of some kind. Do, do, do. As long as I block that off, maybe. I don't know if I actually have to block that off. I think I do. So that would... Let's get a button. And let's get my other button. More buttons, please. Huh. All right, so that would change it to the state it's already in, and this would flip it to the other state. So when this one gets full, it would power and turn this guy on. So we would want to steal power from this torch, basically and send that power to here. So let me think how I could set up an RS NOR latch so it's not so spaced out. Maybe we can make it a little bit more compact here again. So I'll bring you back when I got something figured out. Okay. I think I got it. It's not exactly pretty. <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's really compact or just shaped weird. Um, I moved it up. I had to rebuild it to make room for the this RS NOR latch. And we could actually just put this RS NOR latch over here instead. Off to the side, that is, so it's not so... That way everything fits behind that space. Or, not this, that part of the RS NOR latch, that is. So, the way it works is <laughs> how does it work i don't even know if it does work i haven't tested it or anything same idea i've got a lever underneath this block here to power this so that's deciding the power strength like we said but that gets activated it will power this redstone dust which will turn off that redstone torch which will turn off that redstone and will allow this torch to turn on now this is currently on, but during normal operations that would have turned off at this point. So let's go ahead and put a few items in to get started. Oh, I haven't done the part where I depower the the hopper, mind you. And I wanted that to happen when that pulsar is going, so when this gets powered. So what I could do is make a small modification here. Perhaps it's that redstone. There we go. And we could steal a signal from there and send it into that hopper. 
we'd have to block that off and do that. So that will power this block, which will unpower the hopper. So this thing could now get power from whichever way we choose. Doesn't really matter. We could feed it from the top again, or who knows? We could still tweak the layout. And if you guys have any ideas and better setup than this, then please let me know. You can send in a video response or screenshots or anything you like. But yeah, um, so what did I say? We're going to throw some items in. Let's probably throw in some tools again. So when that goes in, that should power that, which now that torch is off. So this RS Norlatch is no longer being powered in that state. So as soon as this torch turns off, it will actually change states. So that is what we want, and that should happen when we get... Anything else I can throw in there? Huh. You know, like my sword? Did I just duplicate my sword? Okay. It's like, what? Let's go. I thought they got rid of that. Okay, so not quite yet has this turned on, but when it does, it should start spitting things out. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's going. Is it because it's being butted? Ah, it is. So I might have to power that hopper a different way. But there we have it. It's sped out pretty much everything except for a little bit, which is okay. That is what we want. And we could change it so it spits out everything completely. And maybe I will, to be honest. It doesn't need to have... Yeah doesn't need to keep anything in there, really. So we could simply do that by changing this guy so that it doesn't shut off until there is one item in there, I think. And even that item might get spat out with just the delay in the system switching. So let's see if we can do that again. We'll throw in all my tools and some dirt. And it will spit everything out. And let's see if it completely empties itself, or it... Because that will... Now it should, I think, empty itself out completely. Because that will continue to have a signal strength of 1 until it is empty. Yeah, there we go. It cleared itself out. That might be the better way to go. Just to prevent clogging of some kind if, for whatever reason, a certain item type gets stuck in there. I'm not sure if that would actually happen or not. But, who knows? Maybe... Okay, so that does work. The only issue is the budding of the, um, the dropper here. And we could probably fix that with just a repeater here, actually. That should take care of it. So let's try it one more time. So yeah, the budding was diagonally. The block diagonal to that, where I just put the repeater, was being powered. So that guy was being budded, so it wasn't actually responding to those pulses. Oops. And the bow. And stack pearls. And. <laughs> Interesting. That wasn't supposed to happen. What's going on? What did we break? Is it still not being. Is it still being budded in some fashion? Pulsar is going. I wouldn't think that would, but it seems to be. Well, what we could do then is... We could actually, I guess... Yeah, that is still doing it. We could throttle, I guess, the hopper above it. So this way it will actually spit out any items that are in here, and also any items that happen to get into this hopper as well. That might be what we have to do. Is that budding? I'm not sure how else to take care of that budding to power that guy without budding that one. I didn't think that repeater... I guess maybe the repeater does. That's a shame. So yeah, um, that could work, I guess. Make sure I get my tools. But yeah, I think that's all we have time for today. 
let me know if you have any ideas on how to improve, change, compactify. That's a word, trust me. Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you enjoy seeing this kind of stuff in my videos, if you want to see me trying to figure out redstone designs that we will use, or if you would prefer me doing it all off camera and just showing you the final product. I know some people don't like redstone, so maybe it is boring for them to watch this kind of episode. So just let me know in the comments below. And we will try to please everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. This actually looks a lot cleaner than that one.